Miraflores. <sighs> what can I say? Tons of history. One of Lima's many metropolitan areas is right in the ocean, is right on top of a cliff overseeing the Pacific Ocean. It's beautiful, it's historic, it's new, it's busy, it's divine. I mean, just take a look. I love the ocean. In case I haven't made it clear in this channel, I love the fresh air, the cool breeze, the fruits from the ocean. Mixed with high hills and a thriving city and an impeccable food scene, yeah, that's Miraflores. I went to Miraflores many times. Today, however, we're going to Larco Mar, a scenic open mall overseeing the gorgeous Pacific Ocean. So it's fitting that, you know, we eat at one of Gaston Acurio's many restaurants, Tanta. Okay, we are in Tanta restaurant in Larco Mar here by Miraflores. This is another Gastona Curio restaurant. And so far, it's my favorite one. It's right in front of the ocean, uh, but on a cliff. I mean, look at, look at what I'm looking at right now. This is how I'm eating today. Wonderful ambiance. And we are in a beautiful mall as well. I absolutely love this place. Let's just, let me show you what I'm seeing. I just asked the waitress and manager what Tanta concept was about because so far El Bodegón has been more of traditional foods that were popular and are, are still popular here in Peru. Then you have La Mar which we haven't gone to, we probably won't go to but it's all about the seafood, it's all about the ocean and uh, Gaston has a tendency to create concepts within his restaurant and Tanta was actually a bakery. Uh, and in that turned into a bakery with coffee shop into like a coffee shop concept and then they began to implement uh, restaurant uh, concept mixed in with it um, so you get a little bit of the popular famous uh, dishes here that you can find in Peru from lomo saltado to ceviche to uh, tiradito uh, but then they still have that beautiful display of pastries and desserts that, that you saw earlier uh, and and if it, it sort of evolved throughout the years that 20 year mark uh, Pretty pretty cool concept. So I think everyone here has gotten a little bit of everything uh, And I can't wait to show you all what we got More importantly, I can't wait to taste it because I'm freaking starving. It's about four o'clock haven't eaten anything all day, which for me that's a sin so Yeah, uh, it's 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 stomach growling As a side note, I do think that it's hilarious that there's a freaking Chili's behind us. It's a, just the contrast from the American side of things and foods versus this, this glorious place. Um, I mean, kudos to you if you like Chili's, but if you're in Peru, you gotta go Peruvian. That's it, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna complain anymore, that's all. But I mean, it's stupid. You're gonna come to Peru and freaking have Chili's. I guess maybe if you're from Peru, you want to have chilies and you're probably tired of this. But come on. I mean, what do you want? A, a baby back rib or a beautiful ceviche? A baby back rib that's made poorly. Or a beautiful ceviche or lomo saltado. 
I mean, it's time to be real with ourselves, people. Restaurant chains. Let's start being real. Okay, so this is my tumbo and maracuya drink. Apparently, it's an Amazonian citrus drink. They're both tart, but they're also refreshing. I made sure that I got them a little bit sweet. Wow, but look how beautiful that looks. That's freaking amazing. It's so delicious. Pero no está tan casi though. Le echaron bastante azúcar. They added a ton of sugar. Apparently this is super tart. Uh, but I'm in, I'm in love with this. This is supposed to be a brew for them. Uh, this particular drink. Um, so I love it. Keep them coming, baby. Here it is. It does look like a passion fruit. Hey, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> wow, the seeds are very tough. Mm. It is tart, but it's not too crazy tart. It actually tastes like mamoncillo with a mixture of citrusness. Oh, my tiradita just came. Gracias. Look at this beautiful tiradito. This is a dos cremas tiradito. So in other words, two sauces. And the fish is actually parrot fish, which I don't think I've ever had. Isn't that beautiful? You know, some people might consider this area a little douchey. I could I could care what people think. This this area is beautiful and the food is as vibrant as this area. But let's take a look at the rest of the menu here. We got beautiful causas de pollo. Eso que es allá? Wow. That's a papa rellena that they got over there. And then another beautiful causa. Let's see what we got here. This is taku taku. Yeah. Taku taku with um, with plantains, eggs, and and chicken. We got another one there, another one there. Es pollo al horno. Okay. Con papas Beautiful. A su madre. Qué belleza. Holy crap, people! Look at this beautiful pork belly chicharrón. It's massive and it's packed with chicharrón. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the chicharrón. This is beautiful. I'm gonna take a little bit of a piece here. Look how juicy. Look how juicy this is. Okay, let's try it. Wow. That's all I'm gonna say. It's juicy, it's tender, it's crispy. Mm. Absolutely. It's, it's divine. The pork tastes great, it has a good pork flavor, but it's also tasting fresh. I can see why Gaston is doing so well. Peru has a tendency to eat a lot of their dishes with starch on starch. And this is one of those dishes. You got sweet potato here. And then you got the bread. I could have like 10 of these. Just needed a little extra oomph. Just because of that, that starch on starch. Mm. They also added 
the guacatay, <laughs> which is like a Peruvian mint. I've had three chicharrones so far in Peru. Two of them have had that. One of them, this one has it fresh, the other one was fried. Never would have thought of putting pork and mint together. I'm not sure why, it makes sense. Okay, that was the, the red, the red one was the ricotto, this is the ají amarillo. The pear fish is actually very meaty, but, but it's not the best tasting fish out there. I'm gonna mix both of them together. The ricotto and the ají. These are supposed to be two spicy peppers and they're not spicy at all. They have diluted them by washing them and sifting them in where they're not spicy, but you still get all the beautiful flavor from both peppers, both native to Peru. Tiradito like ceviche always pair with their beautiful corn, the choclo. Wonderful. Okay, that's what's left of uh, the dish. I devoured that thing. It was, yes, it was delicious. It was colorful. And it was Peru in uh, one plate. Here's my ají de gallina. This was one of the first dishes I've ever had from Peru. Not in Peru, but just from Peru. And it was my favorite for, for many, many, many years. Here it is. My first ají de gallina in Peru. Está rico. Muchas veces. Fue el primer plato, creo que peruano, que, que yo probé así. I love that here in some places they have a tendency to mix the corn, the choclo, with the rice. And I believe they might add butter to it. And it just takes this rice to a different level of amazingness. Now, I'm not sure why some places add it and some places don't. I'm just told that some people do and some people don't. Um, I don't think it's like an area or a region thing. It's just more of like, hey, it's just rice with choclo or just regular white rice. So. Uh, it just depends on the place and the person making it, but it's a great touch. James, can you try the salsa and the pollo? Yes, please. Oh, that's good. You want to try mine? Está muy rica esa salsa. Siente la salsa. And everyone at the table is bringing up a good concept, a good idea or a, a good approach at least that the food is good and if this was not uh, a Gaston Acurio's restaurant it would be excellent but it feels like it could be a little bit more elevated um, the the tiradito and that pan con lechon were uh, amazing starts quite frankly uh, it was the best pan con lechon that I've had uh, here and in the US um, I, I put that next to anyone's uh, pan con lechon so it was a great start but the main courses are sort of they're not bad but they're like mm, yeah they're they're medium they're lacking something um, so it is what it is the view is still good though mine's, mine's is the best. yeah my sister-in-law's dish here is the best It looks like a. It looks like it's barbecue sauce, but it's not. It's almost like a ahi panka type of dish. And it's absolutely. Uh, it's a juicy, delicious chicken breast. Okay, I had to get another one. This one is with camu camu and lima. Camu camu is another Amazonian uh, fruit that's also very acidic and tart. It looks like a berry, and therefore you get that color. 
and it's mixed in with uh, lime. So it's like a camu camu limeade. Um, and I just wanted to just get get this to go. The other ones were like mango and passion fruit, and then the other one with that the one that I had earlier as well. Beautiful looking brew. Oftentimes when I visit places like this one with views like this and locations like Tantas, the history and local touch can get fade away by creating tourist traps to create cash cow businesses. It can be a fictional depiction of an actual place and the locals, but not here. Yes, there were some tourists. It would be odd if there weren't tourists here in such a beautiful area. There were also locals and all sorts of backgrounds and colors and genders. Peruvians love ingenuity, but they also love culture. They stay close to their heritage and their roots. They stay close to their cultures and their roots and create a beautiful and bountiful history as rich as their soils. It may just be my perspective of things, but it seems like most places are like that here. It's certainly the case with Miraflores. Thank you.